do you want connection Mm -hmm. and empathy and support and to be heard? Or do you want me to help you solve this? When it comes to the connection that they could be building in their relationship, and we see this with relationships so often, which is why I really want to highlight it and bring it in for our listeners, is that the partner that's way more feeling, she oftentimes feels unheard, unseen, and therefore unvalued or undervalued, right? Conscious couples, business partners, and singles committed to attracting their dream partner. Welcome to the Conscious Couples Podcast, where we share our life, love story, and combined relationship expertise to help you create and consistently cultivate the most magnificent, intimate relationship possible. Never again will you feel hopeless and alone in your intimate relationship challenges. Having accumulated thousands of hours coaching conscious couples and individuals all over the world, as well as starting and growing a global business together, Alan and I are here to guide you and all things relationships. Thank you again for tuning into the one place where it's not about you or me, it's about the the we. we. Conscious couples and individuals from all over the world, welcome back. This is episode number 90, which partner is more emotional. This is going to be a good one. Yeah. As always, thank you to Next Level Podcast Solutions for producing this show and I believe 54 others now. Not certain about that number. I'll check in another time. Uh, As always, my love, ladies first, what is your intention for today's episode? My intention is for all of our listeners to value emotions way more than currently might be valued in their relationships. We did a thing there with the title where it's which partner is more emotional and you might think if you are part of the stigma of the past that we're thinking that that's a bad thing oh no that's a very very good thing it's amazing unless you're an emotional train wreck in which case i'm I'm being playful (laughs) obviously i'm joking (laughs) emotions aren't bad Mm -hmm. emotions are very very important because if you bottle them up bad things happen suppressing your emotions can be a very negative thing okay Mm -hmm. so emily and i had one of her clients and her partner on a relationship talks coaching session. And we did this analysis of this understanding of, okay, we're all righty or lefty. Okay. So everyone think of righty being very logical, very rational, very mathematical, and lefty being much more emotional and feeling things. So you have the thinkers and the feelers. So this is the way we broke it down. So Kevin and I, my business partner, we did an episode two or three weeks ago. And we said, listen, I know this is a gross oversimplification, but it's helpful for people. And we did this with our listeners. We said, listeners, are you an emotional person who also has thoughts? Or are you a thinking person who also has emotions? Mm -hmm. And we all can kind of size up our associations and realize which is which. For me, as a computer engineer and a mathematical thinker, I'm very clearly a thinking person who also has emotions, depending on which movie I'm watching, obviously. If it's Titanic, it's mostly just emotions. Mm. Uh, But at the end of the day, it's very important to understand if you're righty or lefty. So which partner is more emotional? This is not to call anyone out. This is not to make anyone feel bad about that. This is to lean into more of who we really are and more importantly, who we actually aspire to be. Definitely. And one of the one of the benefits of that is you can actually recognize when you are caging yourself into maybe being just that just that left handed version of yourself or just that right handed version of yourself. So right there by being a computer and electrical engineer, right, that's more the right handed kind of analogy if you will so Mm -hmm. by default of that your ways typically lean in initially into the thinking realm not necessarily feeling realm just like you said for example unless there's a movie on now you having awareness to that just like this client and her partner had more awareness to that that they tend to lean a little bit more in this direction than that direction that helps them kind of protect their downside So for someone who might be more thinking oriented first rather than feeling oriented first, they are able to understand what might actually be causing a lot of the conflicts in their relationship. Is it because they're quote unquote not in the thinking brain when they need to be? Like for example, if you and I are trying to problem solve and I'm just feeling my way forward, it's going to cause maybe a little bit of a riff. 
or we might be or growing vice apart. versa. Exactly. If I'm vulnerable and emotional and Emilia comes in immediately trying to solve my problem <clears throat> with her intellectual brain, her chess player, so to speak, mm -hmm. I'm going to feel unseen and uncared for. And so another way to think of this is kind of like problem solving success strategy chess player. Yeah. The other side is love, compassion, empathy, care, listening, listening. And and so you need all of these skills if you want a well-rounded, holistic relationship. So Emilia and I, one more layer deep for this episode, we talked before this as we prepare for most of these, not all of them, <laughs> most of these. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the four modalities of thinking. And she was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. what if they're modalities of experiencing the world? And I said, nope. <laughs> As a thinker, he said, uh-uh, I <laughs> no, think it's this. <laughs> yeah, I think it's this. And then we went into how most people say, I think X, Y, Z. Other people say, I feel like X, Y, Z. Right. That's and a great determinant to show which one you tend to lean into. Thinkers or feelers. Thinkers and feelers. Some people are feelers who also think. Some people are thinkers who also feel. Very cool. And then there's just some doers that don't think and they don't feel. They just do. <laughs> so, <laughs> but if we let's not to complicate expand, it. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah. Let's for the for sake of this episode, we just are really talking about the thinkers. All right. So there's ducks, the there's geese, and there's eagles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. So the four modalities of thinking and or experiencing the world. Mm -hmm. The first one, of course, I'm biased here, but it's numbers. Mm -hmm. So the only way to think is in numbers. I'm kidding. Uh, so numbers is number one. It's the rarest. I think I do, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I feel like you it's think the you're wrong. No, I, I think it's possible that I'm wrong. I do. <laughs> okay. So the first one's thinking. Mm -hmm. Second one is energy. Second rarest in my opinion. Mm. I don't think in energy. I just don't. You don't think in energy. No, I don't feel in energy. <laughs> I, mean, I do, but I'm not attuned to it. That's no. all I'm saying. Okay. Nice. The third is words. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that's the most common. That's, again, my, my statistical belief. So and someone then, who's words thinking, if you will, they usually will literally talk themselves through a problem mm -hmm. or a challenge or whatever. We call this verbally processing. And our, to our listeners, you guys might have heard us say that I'm just going to verbally process here. It's where you're just kind of word spewing. Mm -hmm. And you most likely are a pretty strong communicator. If you think, if your modality of thinking or experiencing the world is words, you're most likely pretty strong at communicating and most likely pretty good at relationships. I'm not just saying that. I've, I've got some data behind that. Okay. And then the last one is pictures. You think in pictures. You think in, you feel in pictures. You experience the world in pictures. You see mm -hmm. images of you at, you know, 35, you at 37. You, you see your car. You can close your eyes. You can see your car right now. Okay. You can see your refrigerator. <laughs> you can see pizza. <laughs> you can see Domino's at the door. Emilia and I ordered Domino's earlier. <laughs> no, but the point is, is that that's what it is. Pictures, words, <clears throat> numbers, and energy. Mm -hmm. And so for all of our listeners, I know we're packing a lot into one episode. We want you to identify. <laughs> Emilia's giggly right now. And it's making me I'm so happy. I'm just thinking about pizza. It's making me so happy. <laughs> Thank you. It's You giggly is my favorite thing. So we want our listeners to identify which of these four they are. <laughs> now, if numbers is first, so back to this couple that we coached, mm -hmm. the male in the relationship is numbers first. Rational, oh, yeah. numbers, finances, strategic, the chess player, the scientist, yes. so to speak. <clears throat> and the female in the relationship is, I would say probably energy. She's energy She's first. She's energy first. And then you think Pic words. Pictures or words. Sometimes she goes back and forth. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. And that's your client. Yeah. Okay. So sweetheart, <clears throat> talk to us about the pros and cons of each and what our listeners can do to work together. Yeah. So in this, in this example, one of the things for <laughs> the pro of this is that ultimately they are finding each other because there's the yin to the yang for example one of the things that helps their relationship really be cohesive which we find in a lot of relationships is the fact that this partner offsets the let's say weaknesses of the other partner this is where you get this is where you get the you complete me yeah because we're righty and lefty together versus right. righty righty lefty lefty exactly and that's <clears throat> that's what i would say is one of the biggest cons in or, or biggest pros sorry one of the biggest cons or downsides to this that we expressed in here is that 
ultimately they're ending up missing each other a lot when it comes to the connection that they could be building in their relationship. And we see this with relationships so often, which is why I really want to highlight it and bring it in for our listeners is that the partner that's way more feeling, she oftentimes feels unheard, unseen, and therefore unvalued or undervalued, right? And likewise, when the other partner that's more of the numbers, statistical rationality is trying to just logic their way through a problem, they're feeling underseen, undervalued, and unheard when they're trying to give a solution or advice to that emotional partner. And so both of them, what they end up experiencing, which is the biggest downside, not feeling seen when they're trying to be seen within the relationship not feeling heard when they're trying to give advice or receive just space Mm. and then not feeling appreciated in the way in which they naturally go about doing things. And so what does that culminate to just tons of missing one another? So really what I want to pull in and highlight in this is that the emotional partner tends to feel unheard because the rational partner quote unquote, or the logical partner is trying to problem solve. Yeah. And there's a big difference from, for an emotional partner to feel heard yeah that's hard to understand for the problem solver of course because it's why wouldn't we just move forward and solve that right versus the more emotional partner which i think in some cases is me in our relationship which is interesting definitely but there are times when you'll jump right to helping me solve it yeah and it will be no no and so this is a good question cheat code question kevin and i have talked about this too i've done i've used this with you Mm -hmm. and he's used this with his wife taryn do you want to be heard right now or do you actually want advice? So important. It's such a good so question. Important. Do you want to be heard right now or do you just want advice? Uh, or do you just want guidance or do you just want input? Do you like that question is so huge. Yeah. Do you want connection mm-hmm. and empathy and support and to be heard or do you want me to help you solve this? Yeah. So you and I have different modality different things we'll say yeah hi everybody i'm caleb and this is my beautiful wife angela uh we're pretty new clients to alan and amelia and their conscious couples coaching yeah i think we started back in early 2022 around february and our relationship has completely shifted in a few short months i think one of the biggest takeaways from working with them was our communication which i believe is an obstacle for most couples um i was talking to Ange in a way that I would understand, but it wouldn't connect to her, which caused some arguments, but Al and Amelia were able to point that out. And now I can talk to her how she's going to understand. She can do the same for me. Yes. Our communication went is way better than um, it's ever been. We've been together for about six years now. And as well as just really figuring out what our core values personally are, but as well as what they are um, in our relationship. So being able to communicate from that space is really valuable. So thank you, Alan and Amelia, for everything you've done and for leading the way. Babe, I need a quick strategy sesh. That tells Amelia, boom, Alan wants certainty on how to move forward. Yeah. There are other times when I definitely don't say that and it's family stuff or whatever, whatever I'm going through or growing through. And it's, please don't try to solve my problem. I just want to be heard. What I call tea kettle, which is just let some of the the air out of the tea kettle before the kettle bursts. A lot of people know that as venting. Venting. So I want to zoom into that. So the strategy sesh is a cue trigger word, essentially. That's actually a really positive trigger that Alan and I have shared language in our relationship that we really encourage other people to take with them because Mm -hmm. it's been so helpful. When he says, I need a strategy sesh, he's expressing his need for problem solving skills to be combined at the table of whatever it is. Yep. I know that immediately I can bring my problem solver, which I'm really, really good at. And that's what I tend to go to in relationships Mm -hmm. when Alan needs to feel heard or tea kettle or vent or just work through and have me hold space for him and just actively listen, which is so important for processing through really hard, really complex, really heavy emotions. Let's say, for example, you had a hard day or there was a really emotionally upsetting experience and you wanted to kind of be in that, which a lot of couples experience when he says, Something like, can we just connect or something like that? That helps me realize I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time. 
Yeah, I actually want to take ownership here. I don't do a very good job of communicating the second one. I think I'm really good at communicating when I want a strategy sesh. Yeah, you I don't think I do nearly as well at communicating when I don't. Yeah. Until after. Because sometimes you'll Truth. go into strategy mode and yeah. then I'll yeah. say, sweetheart, I <laughs> can we not? We right talked now? about this on another episode. And so when there is more of that connection pull and for our listeners, you'll, you'll know after this episode when there is more of a need and a craving from your partner to kind of go into more strategy sesh versus when they really just want to be heard. And if you're someone that's more on that like logical, rational, analytical side, and maybe that's always your go to way of thinking. Be mindful because you're likely bringing that problem solver in with you in every single engagement with your relationship. And mm -hmm. therefore, the emotional experience that's being trying to be connected on with your partner is not happening because mm -hmm. the problem solver is just coming in and trying to figure it out. I know because I did that so often with so many of my relationships and it had damaged it because ultimately what skill wasn't being developed was active listening, was just sitting in the discomfort of being vulnerable and experiencing emotions raw, nothing to change, but just really just mutual coping, what's called reciprocal coping, which is I sit in the discomfort of my partner going through something and she or he is not asking me to solve it, but rather just asking me to stay in this moment with them. Mm -hmm. And to experience those things together yeah. rather than alone. Yeah. Because when you're in the dark, the last thing you want to do is be alone. Yeah. Uh, the very last piece of this, because I know we got to jump soon, we're coming up on a minute left is we actually had homework for these partners and the homework assignment was essentially, we want you to practice the opposite. Yeah. Each partner, <laughs> we want them to practice the discomfort of doing the opposite. <laughs> so we wanted the emotional partner to try to be more rational and try to solve the problem. Yeah. While the more rational problem solver, we wanted that person to be vulnerable and kind of sit in the moment and try not to solve it. Yeah, and just because listen. Because ironically, what's comfortable for the rational partner is jump to problem solver. Right. What's going to be uncomfortable is sitting in the emotions mm -hmm. and vice versa for the emotional partner. So that's our homework to you as well if you're listening. Yeah. And <laughs> how dare you give I homework. <laughs> but that's what we would recommend is Definitely. identify which partner tends to be which. Remember, we're all both. But which one are you stronger righty or stronger lefty? Yeah. I think everyone has a stronger arm in this yeah. analogy. It's a skill. And practice the opposite for one week and just see how your relationship deepens. Mm. And if anything goes wrong, it's not our fault. Full, dis <laughs> full disclaimer. Well, <laughs> no, here's I'm the kidding. thing. Both of them are skills. And that's where, like, honestly, I think coaching is such a great avenue for that. Because if you have no idea, like, this partner, like, really didn't have a lot of skill set built around the emotional, like, honestly, sitting in the discomfort of their partner's emotional distress. And that's a skill that has to be developed, just like the emotional partner needs to learn how to develop the skill set of being rational. That is a skill. So when you can kind of pair with someone who already has that skill developed, or at least can help you strategize the, the best book to read or the best podcast to listen to or what podcast episodes you and I have talked about in order to do that, the actual tangible how that literally is such a game changer because ultimately we can ask and we can encourage you guys to kind of go do. But the downside of that is you might not know where to start. So hopefully you can lean on us for that resource because we can, just like this episode, give you some of those cheat codes and help you kind of get away from all the BS and and really start on a path that's clear and customized to you. I hadn't thought about this until now, but I actually have a client who her husband says to her, you're too emotional. Aww. And I actually talked to her about this and I said, honestly, it looks to me, sounds to me as an objective bystander. And this is not just me sticking up for you. This is what I believe holistically. Yeah. It sounds to me like he's not emotional enough, I meaning think... you are willing to be vulnerable <laughs> And things bother you and affect you where he's numbing and coping and just constantly distracted. And, and again, he's and, afraid and because he's afraid. he doesn't know yep. how to he go doesn't into have that skill. That skill. Yeah, and it is. It's a, it's a skill. And I, I want to say this as well. When I was younger, I didn't learn vulnerability and emotional intelligence and emotional adaptability and the ability to sit with uncomfortable emotions until at least my mid twenties. Yeah. I'm still working and through I'm, that myself of course, too. Yeah. But I, I feel like I've developed that skill a ton You're over the last couple of years. Yeah. Thank you, sweetheart. I really appreciate that. That's been yeah. unbelievably challenging for me as a engineer. 
Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think you kind of already talked about relationship talks coaching. Obviously, that was kind of talked about a lot in this episode. That was a couple who said, you know what? I want to book a free session. And that's what came of it. So that's what you can expect. It's it's really quite awesome. So we Friday night, all four of us partied hardy. I'm kidding. (laughs) Uh, Show up with your drink of choice. No alcohol, please. Emilia and I want to keep it Mm non-alcoholic. And we will go deep. We'll go deep on all the challenges that you're facing. Yeah. So if you want to book one of those and you want to start for your unique situation, that link's going to be in the show note. In addition to that, there's going to be another link to register for our next free live virtual event. And it's going to be digging into what we saw was out of all of our podcast episodes that we've ever recorded to this date. When this launches, it's All 90. 90 of them. And what we saw with the data is that our listeners want to learn more about how to practice nonviolent communication. We had one episode that literally topped the charts of everything that we've talked about. It was twice as many listens as the other episodes, right. which was wild. Statistically, to me. ridiculously significant. So right. we want to take what we've learned since that episode and we want to cultivate all of that into the content and integrate that so that you, if you join us, us by registering right now you can get all the goodies that we have for you that event's going to be the 16th of november we do that every third thursday of the month and that's going to be at 6 p.m eastern standard time so we hope you join us that would be amazing and hopefully we'll see you next episode and my birthday will be the next day so if you want to come in pop in say happy birthday alan and then leave the zoom room you can uh it's totally up to you no i'm just joking where i'm accepting a hundred dollar gift cards for anyone that, <laughs> that wants to support the cause of alan's birthday <laughs> <DM me. laughs> uh, that made me lose my train of thought but yeah it's funny okay so uh thank you as always for listening episode 90 is a wrap we're coming up Ooh. on our first hundred 10 more to 100. Thank love. you for staying with us, everyone. We really appreciate it. This is the the love train. Oh, So it's baby. not stopping anytime soon. <laughs> uh, as always, it's not about you or me. It's about the, the we. we. We'll talk to you next time. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Conscious Couples Podcast. We love connecting with the Conscious Couples community. So please make sure you follow us on Instagram. I am at Evolve with Amelia and Alan is a Lazarus 88. Also, if you or your partner resonated with this episode, leave us a review at the link in the show notes and please share this with someone you love and care about. Until next time, remember, it's not about you or me. It's about the we. We.